requests known as well. So Gray Song Book, the open number 555. 555. We'll sing this, then Elder will lead us in prayer, and then we can be dismissed to our classes. 555, Grace Song Book. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. with me please our Heavenly Father we thank you for this another opportunity that we as your children have to assemble together a beautiful day that you've blessed us with we pray Heavenly Father that as we come together at this time the things that we say and do will all be in accordance to your will and that uh, we can also glorify your name and edify uh, one another we are thankful for those that are here for class, especially for the, the parents that sees the need to have their children here. We pray that you will continue, continue to uh, bless them uh, as, as the children uh, mature and grow up. We're thankful for our teachers. We pray that you will bless them and they, they can easily remember their lessons that they uh, want to present. We continue to pray for those that are suffering with different issues. Uh, we pray that you will bless and watch over them. We, we have Vacation Bible School coming up, Heavenly Father, very shortly. We continue to pray that uh, for adequate uh, help. We pray that uh, we will be able to do those things that uh, will reach uh, many uh, young children and families. We th pray for our country. We pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, some of the turmoil that's going on, that it can be uh, uh, ceased in according to your will. We ask you to be with us as we go to class. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good, evening. Good, evening. good evening. Can you hear me, Glenda? Kind of? Okay. We're working on that. 
Well, I want to welcome everyone to our uh, Wednesday evening uh, Bible study. We are studying in the book of Romans. And uh, we just started it last week, so we really are just first going to be getting into some of the scripture this evening. And it's unfortunate Marilyn's not here talking to her last week. Apparently when she went over to Italy, we followed some of the similar paths that she was on. So uh, it was kind of kind of neat there. So what I thought... What we do here is um, kind of get our mindset of what Rome is like. I'm going to show a few more pictures tonight before we get into the lesson here. It just kind of ties in together. So um, that there, we were walking. That was the first night we were in Rome, and we were just kind of walking around trying to figure out the lay of the land. And we walked by. We came in from the back side of this building. We could tell it was something pretty important. And uh, as we went around... Um, you can see a bigger part. It, it's a big government building. It's 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 not just for a look at. They it's used. It's functioned uh, every day, and um, uh, it's just a big massive thing. But you can see the art, the architecture, and all that kind of thing. There, it's just throughout that that whole city. And uh, let me do that part back up here. Okay, now we, you saw this last week. This is the top of the prison where both Paul and Peter were at. That's where Paul spent his last days. And, but everything that's on top wasn't there then, was what I'm told. The prison was underneath. And in fact, you'll see when you go inside, when you go inside, you see that little fence here. You go into the door and then you go down steps and then you go into that little door so it's going down and um, that's what you see on the inside now that I don't think was there either okay uh, but you walk in and, and that's what you see and then you look around and that stairs to the back is where you come in at and then off to on the right side you'll see Angela going downstairs where the jail is actually at and, and then so we went down into the jail, and in there, um, that was our first look. As you look look around, it's a round type of uh, like a well almost, you know, just not deep. And but everything is cold and stone. Um, and then that's again more to the right. Um, and just imagine how that was. Back in Paul's time, there is an old metal door uh, along the steps as you're going down. My gut feeling is is that was probably the access in and out of there. May it not have been still then. I'm not sure what it would have, what it would have been, but it's kind of like you go down steps to get in into the uh, cell. And then there is a hole right on top of the center where they would, I guess, drop food and water in. So, um, so that. Those are all the pictures for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have more that we'll share in the future here. But there is just so much history to that place. And, and um, uh, it's just kind of hard to put your arms around all what has gone, gone on. But tonight we are going to focus, starting in chapter 1, of Paul writing. And you can almost picture him in that cell writing. So because there is where he... He wrote a, a lot of letters. So with that, I'd like to have a volunteer to read uh, verses 1 through 7 of chapter 1 of Romans. Okay, Joyce. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, calls, <clears throat> called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets and the holy scriptures. Concerning his son, who was born of a descendant of David, according to the flesh, who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead, <clears throat> according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith <coughs> among all Gentiles in his name's sake, among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ. To all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, thanks, Joyce. Okay, so um, 
Paul began his letter in the usual way at the time. Um, the writer's name came first, and then Paul described himself as a servant. And um, a servant in the Old Testament, for example, uh, Abraham and Moses, uh, in Psalms 105, 5, and 6, um, and also in 105, 26, uh, I'll just read that to you real quick here. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced, you, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. And then going on in verse 26, <coughs> Uh, he sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. And so the term servant was very commonly used. And we knew that Paul uh, was very well schooled in uh, that area there. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, he describes himself here as an apostle. Now, why do you think he would have to tell the Romans that he's an apostle? Because he was a Roman soldier that had persecuted Christians. Well, he, he, he was a Pharisee, you know, in, in essence, uh, that persecuted Christians. Uh, a little bit about Rome is um, he did not establish Rome as far as the church in uh, Rome. That was established, and we're going to get into that here prior to him. So, um, uh, but what he's showing here is he has, he had the authority to preach the gospel. You know, and at first, the word apostle, you know, described the 12 apostles. Uh, that, was, that was Jesus had uh, set up there. You know, we know that in Luke and Mark, uh, where um, in um, Luke, um, Luke 6, 13, when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he also designated apostles. So Christ set up the, the, the apostles. And so now Paul, is in this letter, he's established himself to the church there that he is also an apostle. And, um, and Paul basically said that he too had received a special co command from, from Jesus Christ and God the Father, and that, that's in um, Galatians. Um, who would like to uh, turn to Galatians and read chapter 1, verse 1? <coughs> hey, volunteers, sure. Audrey. That's pretty clear. Um, so, um, so Paul knew that God had given him a special task, uh, and and so uh, they were. He was called called out, much much like in the Old Testament prophets, like like Jeremiah. So, by the way, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything you want to add, just just far away, Dan. Well, you know, Paul had to constantly. He battled that problem of people not accepting him at various, at, especially at the very beginning, yeah. because of his reputation and what he had to try to do to the church and to Christians. Right. And, you know, he had to have Barnabas take him in and, you know, introduce him, you know, uh, stand up for him, kind of vouch for him. Right. But Galatians chapter one, where you were getting that, where you, where we looked at first one, but I mean, he goes on to defend his yeah. apostleship. Yeah. He says, you know, I, I received this from God. I, I eventually went to Jerusalem and I spent 15 days with the apostles and with Peter and all, but he said, this is a revelation from, you know, I've been given this mission by, by God, so I'm just as, uh, just as much an apostle as any of the rest of them are. But, and you think how skeptical mankind is, okay? And the churches there were already established and started, and, and so here he is writing to them, because he's, as, as we read on, he longed to, to go there. Uh, that uh, uh, he has to, I guess, uh, establish his his authority here. So yeah. Okay, good good comments here. Okay. Um, so.
So, um, so the prophets in the Old Testament um, explain that Christ would free people from, from sin. Uh, there are many uh, true promises in the Old Testament about the birth, life, and death of the resurrection of, of, of Jesus. Uh, so going back to in, in verse 2, he's speaking here about the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So Paul is, is bringing that right, right out of the gate. And, uh, and if we turn to, um, well, it's a long read. I don't think we really want to, unless you want to. But if you go to I, Isaiah chapter 5, 53 and read the whole chapter, that's all about Christ being prophesied. And, and I'll start it off here saying, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a, a root out of dry ground. Uh, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. And you just go on and on and on and, it, and it's prophesying Christ coming. So... I mean, we can read that if somebody wants to, but uh, uh, we don't have to. But we're, you're welcome to. Later? Okay, Stan says later. All right. I said I'll read it later. You'll read it later. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, and then so as it gets into verses 3 and 4, um, these two verses show what the good news is, you know. Probably the Christians in Rome would already know these facts. Um, uh, these, um, you know, these these words and these verses may come from an early statement about Christian belief, but um, but there he he talks of you know um, regarding his son who had or who <coughs> as to his earthly life was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God and part of the resurrection from, from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord you know they likely were on the same page with him okay also um, he mentioned that Jesus belonged to the family of King David at verse 3 there um, as a man, Jesus came from the family of King, King David, named uh, as son of David, was the name of the Messiah. But Jesus taught that the Messiah was more than just a descendant of uh, David. Let's turn to Luke chapter uh, 20, verses 41 through 44. If you'd like to read that. Luke chapter 1, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 20. Verses 41 through 44. Any volunteers? Jack? Luke 20. 41 through 44. Okay, so in, in this writing here, uh, Jesus was saying to them, why is it said that the Messiah is the son of David? And then at the very end of that, David calls him Lord. So then if David is calling him Lord, how can he be his son? And so Jesus is pointing that out in the scripture here, that yeah, he was in that lineage of a man, but he's the son of God. Okay. Um, all right, any comments or questions? Okay, I don't do pop quizzes, but I could. Huh? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Okay. Okay, so, um, The name 
Christ had a special meaning uh, for the uh, Jews. Jesus was the king that God had promised to, to them. So um, uh, that's one area that he pointed out there. The word, so he's, he, in, in, in this church, in Rome, what mixture of background do you have? Jews and Gentiles. You have both there. And so he pointed out about the word Christ that pertains to the Jews, and then the word Lord would mean more to the Gentile Christians. You know, Jewish Christians for Christ and the Gentile Christians for the Lord. Uh, so, of uh, course, the Gentiles were used to obeying human mass masters, but the word Lord was also the usual translation of God's uh, special name in the Old Testament. So, uh, Okay, so then he speaks of, in, in verse 5, um, through him we received grace, or received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith, from his name's sake. Um, so grace, what do we know about grace? What is grace? Unmerited favor. That's right. It's a gift nobody deserves, right? Okay. Paul uh, used to think that he could please God by his his own efforts. You know, he back when he tried to to uh, obey all the details of the law, where he you know tried to elevate himself and educate himself. Uh, but now he knew that he could not earn life by his deeds. It was God's, God's gift. So, um, and, and Paul did not, you know, in his writings, he didn't really feel that he deserved to be an apostle, but it was God's grace that had chosen him. So, um, all right. In verse 6, most Christians in Rome were probably Gentiles. Uh, so just an observation there. And um, the words Rome in verse 7 are not in some manuscripts. Um, so perhaps churches other than the one at Rome received copies of Paul's letters. So just that's just a possibility. Okay, so um, Paul calls the Christians in, in Rome God's holy people. In the Old Testament, we can read how God loved the Israelites. Uh, he chose them to be his holy nation. So now the Gentiles in, in Rome here were also God's holy people. Uh, you know, he, he, you know as, as, in, as in all the congregations, but they are, in essence, his chosen now in the New Testament. So, um, any comments so far? Just kind of blazing on through here. Okay, so um, verse 7. Um, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Going back to, in Numbers in the Old, Old Testament, Aaron blessed the, Is the Israelites. He, he prayed that God would show love to uh, them and prayed that God would give them peace. Paul used the same prayer on behalf of the Christians in uh, Rome. So let's turn to, Rome, to Numbers real quick here. Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 26. Who'd like to read that? Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 26. You want to do that, Terry? Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
saying, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay, thanks. So it's similar, you know, writings here. And he prayed that God would, would give, give them peace. So, um, and he also, as you know, you study Paul and, and a lot of the other letters that he's written, he used the prayer at, at, at the beginning and in many of, of them. Mainly he wanted people to know the inner peace uh, of God's love. And he also wanted the Jewish and the Gentile Christians to love one another. You know, you, you had issues with that then, you know, the, that, that was a big deal. Okay. Any comments? All right, so let's turn to uh, the next verses. Verses 8 through 15. Who would like to read that? Angie. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of the Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers and at all times. And I pray that now at last, by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I plan many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish, that is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at home. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, right out of the gate, Paul thanks uh, God for the Christians that are in Rome. You know, their, their news of, of their faith has, has reached uh, everybody uh, else, elsewhere. And um, he prays for the... Uh, the uh, Christians in uh, Rome, you know, even though he wasn't responsible for them, that's no reason why not to pray for them. We we pray for other congregations throughout the world here. You know, it's all all within the church. And he also prays that he might be able to 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 visit them, but he's leaving that up to uh, to a God. So. Um, He also, in verses 11 and 12, he wanted to make their faith strong. Uh, you know, some, the term some spiritual gift may not mean the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As in 1 Corinthians in chapter 12, you know, perhaps Paul was, uh, uh, did not yet know what spiritual gifts that the Christians in, in Rome actually needed. Um, you know, since he hasn't been there yet. But God would, would, would show Paul, you know, what to teach them when, when he met them. And he was also careful here not to emphasize himself as the giver. Um, and so he corrected what he had said by the, by the words, that is. So when, when you go back up a little bit there, I, I not noticed that before, but... Uh, um, Eleven and then twelve and in eleven he says, "I long to see you, so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each, each other's faith." So he kind of did a pivot there, saying that, you know, um, um, that we're both going to be in, in, encouraged by helping one another. So uh, Paul, you know, very humble guy. I mean, you uh, think about that. Uh, um, I hadn't realized it, but I was talking to Beryl last week. She uh, she loves studying about about Paul, just in uh, general about his life, and that maybe could be a, a future study for us to uh, tear into. So, okay. 
Yes. Two comments on that section. I have a little note in here where Paul says you're always answering my prayers, kind of like the original prayer list. They were on they were on Paul's prayer list. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that thought. Yeah. Uh, but also it emphasizes our need to come together. Yeah. For that mutual encouragement. Yeah. Very good. Paul, Paul had got, wanted to have that with with the Christians in Rome, mm-hmm. and that just emphasizes how much we need that as well. Exactly. We need one another. Each congregation needs the other congregation. Absolutely. This thing likes to jump ahead. I noticed that last week. Okay, and in verses 13 and 14, uh, Paul mentioned that he tried to be for many times to, to, to visit them. We don't know what prevented him. Uh, you know, perhaps maybe his work in Greece, uh, God wasn't ready to leave there yet. Maybe there was more work to, to be done, but the Bible doesn't specifically spell that, that out. Another thing here, um, Greeks did not merely mean people who came from Greece. It meant those who spoke the Greek language. Uh, it also meant those who followed the Greek culture. So they had some tie-ins to uh, that, but they may not have been directly from uh, Greece. Um, I didn't realize this, but non-Greeks translates the word barbarians. So (coughs) I'm not sure what that was about way way back then. Uh, But it describes people whose language sounded like barbar. So not how we think of barbarians, but their language was barbar, so they're the barbarians. (laughs) So a little bit of trivia there. So um, Okay. I could ask my read verses uh, 16 and 17, please. With. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to bring salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in for in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from whom or from first to last. It just says it is written, the righteousness will the righteous will live by faith. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, possible just uh, Paul uh, comes out and he, he's not shamefully he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. You know, he was very bold and very clear with, with that. And sometimes I wonder if we're too calm about the gospel. So we're going to spend a little time here about the gospel in, in this section here. Um, you know, uh, what other, whatever other people would say when Paul was <coughs> talking to him, what, what would he do? He would come out and he would declare the gospel. Is the gospel kind of important? <laughs> kind of, right? Messy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's essential. And, uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a message for everyone, for every nation. Uh, it, it's essential because it changes pe- people's lives and it brings salvation to us. Um, you know, there are many, many other lessons that we are taught in Scripture, but fundamentally, we don't have the gospel. We don't have it. Sim- simple as that. Yeah, Dennis. Now he'll go on to say later on in his letter, you know, that that's where faith comes from. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. Yes. From that gospel. So he's, it means a lot to him. That meaning, the meaningfulness gets stuck into him. Yeah, absolutely. It should be the same for us too. Yeah. And we 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 get. I mean, if you think, think about it, look back in Acts, I mean, it was all about preaching the gospel. Grassroots. And, and, and you know, as a congregation, we can never forget about that, you know. So, uh, okay, we're going to run out of time to get through this section, but we'll just go as far as we can. So the gospel message. Um, so what is the overview of the gospel message? Everyone has done wrong things, which means has, has sinned uh, against God. In Romans 3, 
23, what does that say? We probably know it by, by heart. What, what, Christy? It says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the devil. Absolutely. Give her a star. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't have it with me. Okay. <coughs> Secondly, because of that, we all deserve God's punishment, right? Let's turn to Romans 6.23. Probably know that one too, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody have that 623. Terry. For the wages, excuse me, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so we deserve it, but this gift of God brings eternal life. Okay, another point about the gospel is something that we cannot save ourselves from punishment by our own efforts. We can't even save ourselves by the good works or by our religion, can we? So let's go to Romans 3.20. Would you like to read that? Yes, please. The works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Exactly. Exactly. So, so we can't declare righteousness in God's sight just on our own. It's just not going to happen. So what does that mean? If we stop right there, our situation, we're cooked. We're goose. You know, we're, we're hopeless. However, as we know, God didn't leave us in that hopeless state. What did God do? He sent his son. Okay. Um, he sent his son Jesus to the world, and there's verses there, but let's go to John 3.16. You probably know that by heart. Who'd like to read that? Any volunteers? Yes. Can I do it again, Lee? 3.15. 16. Thank you. Okay. That's pretty clear, isn't it? So, what about Jesus? Well, Jesus lived a perfect life without any, any sin, and we know that in Hebrews 4.15. Who'd like to read Hebrews 4.15? Just give us a second here, El Elvin, or two. Who'd like to read that? Wait. Hebrews 4.15? Yes. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Think about that. Jesus was tempted in every way. Okay. We're going to run out of time. But uh, we're going to pick it up from here next week. Thank you for your comments.
Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come is of, in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in, is it in the world. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and every one that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Thank you. <laughs> In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent, us, sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be, to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God is to, has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made complete, perfect or complete that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hasn't seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. This is from 1 John chapter 4. Initially verses 1 through 3 and then verses 7 through 21. But I think it lets, you know, John, this book of 1 John I, I, I love because it lets us know how important love is in our lives as Christians. And if we don't have it, if we don't love each other as Christians, we got a big problem. And he goes on to say in the next chapter, verse 5, chapter 5, excuse me, in verse 13, he says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of God, Son of God. Why? That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay, so he's writing to tell them this, this love is important. The stuff is written, for, you know, so that we can know that we have eternal life. But we can't have it without that love. That's so important to us. And so that's just a message that I wanted to pull out of, out of John, 1 John this, this evening. If there's anybody here that uh, wants to confess that name of Christ, this is a good time to do so. Or if you already have and you are lacking some love in your life, if you've got brethren that you don't get along with or you don't like, this is a good time to ask for prayers for that situation. So come forward as we stand and sing. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us face so haste to its Tis the fountain.
Again, as we said earlier, we're so happy to have those with us this evening. If you're visiting, we are appreciative of your being with us as well. Those who are joining us online also want to remember that we'll meet again next uh, this coming Sunday at 930 for our Bible study and 1030 for our worship service and again at 6 o'clock for our evening worship as well. Uh, one other additional announcement uh, that I need to make is this is from Joyce concerning her, uh, her sister Karen. Uh, please remember uh, Karen in your prayers. She will be undergoing several tests over the next three weeks. And she says that her health has been deteriorating recently. And with all, with her, or with the family's history, uh, that Joyce is concerned. So um, please remember Karen and uh, the family as uh, she goes through these tests over the next several weeks. And then also Ryan is, uh, is out of town. That's why he's not here. You may know that already, but he is uh, speaking at, um, at another congregation tonight. So uh, keep him in your, your prayers. I'm assuming that the family is with him as well as they travel back this evening. That's all the announcements that I have at this time. So I ask Brother David if he'll lead us in closing prayer. Let's pray. Almighty Father in heaven, Father, we are grateful, Father, for your many blessings. We're thankful, Father, for this congregation, the works that go on here. We're thankful, Father, for this Bible class we had tonight. And we ask that much was gained from it. We ask that you be with the ones that have been mentioned, especially at this point, uh, uh, De uh, Joyce's sister, Karen. Uh, pray that things go well for her with the tests and things, and also to be with Leslie with her upcoming tests and things. And, we ask for your healing hands upon them as well as with many others that have been brought up here within the congregation. Father, we ask for your guidance throughout the remaining of, of this week. We ask for strength always to do what your will is. We, we ask, Father, for uh, the opportunities to come our way to teach others about your uh, word. And we also look forward to our upcoming uh, vacation, uh, vacation Bible school. And we pray for uh, a very fruitful day there. We ask these things through your Son, Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. Amen.